Well, hello, my name is Lisa Lumley and I write a blog called Come Up Here and See, which you can find at comeupherensee.ca. And today I'm just going to be uh, been reading this fabulous book by Derek Prince called Secrets of a Prayer Warrior. And if you want to be the prayer warrior that God has called you to be, you need to find out about some of these secrets. So the first one is that the highest calling given to mankind is that we are called kings and priests unto God the Father through our, the forgiveness of our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelations 1, 5 or 6. Isn't that exciting? So that is the highest calling to all mankind. So what we are supposed to be doing actually is that as kings rule, correct? And as priests, we offer up sacrifices of prayer like Jesus did. So we're actually supposed to be ruling the world through our prayers. And that is the highest calling given to all mankind. And oh, I'm so excited. This book was like veils upon veils upon scales taken away from my eyes and my heart. And it just gets me excited all the time. So Derek believes that there's um, eight basic conditions before we can even, like before our prayers can even really be heard. And two of those are reverent submission and forgiveness. And I say yes and amen, that is for sure. So what is reverent submission? Well, reverent submission is, um, is coming unto God, submitting reverently because he is holy. But see, our entitled society and our way of living is where respect and honor for any kind of authority has been abused, misused, uh, thrown, stomped on, and kicked out of the window. The media tells us that we don't have to have respect for our government. The media tells us we don't have to have respect for our husbands. If you're a wife, the media, it just t goes on and on. And it just screams at us daily. We don't have to respect for our parents, our employers, our teachers, nothing whatsoever. And no matter who they are, we don't have to respect them. It's a entitled society of me, myself, and I, which is very dangerous. So, and, but this feeling or we affects our relationship with God Almighty. And many have been taught directly not to respect God. But Cambridge describes reverence as showing great respect and admiration. And then Miriam Webster describes submission as an act of submitting to the authority of or control of one of another. So the word of God tells us Jesus was always heard. Isn't that amazing? Always heard. Do you want your prayers to be always heard? Think about this. Because of his reverent submission to the Father. Hebrews 5, 7, 8. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. And so Jesus did not just learn reverent submission at the Garden of Gethsemane. He walked in it his entire earthly life as the Son of Man. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. So, you know, since reverent submission is not understood in our culture, and if you were brought up and I was a spoiled brat, then I definitely have had a hard time with it. I looked up different translations of those words in Hebrews 5, 7. So the New American Standard says devout behavior, amplified, unfailing determination to do the Father's will. Oh, doesn't that sound wonderful? The common English Bible was godly devotion. The Good News translation was humble and devoted. And the Living Bible was strong desire to obey God at all times. But for me, the best is the International Children's Bible. He left it all up to God. Oh, how much better would we all be if we just left it all up to God? I would save myself from so much heartache and tears absolutely amazing when I think about it. So it, what the International Children's Bible and that definition describes to me is the childlike faith that Jesus lived in response to his father 
and as an example for me and you and all of us to live. And he portrayed this the best in the Garden of Gethsemane. Three times he prayed or begged the Father, Daddy, I do not want to do this. I, but, he added in this amazing but, but not my will, your will be done. Oh, I just, I've got to get there. <laughs> Someday, it's a process, but that's my, that's my goal in life is to get there to the Father. Not my will be done, Lord, but yours. Because I know that in that place, there is joy, there is peace. There is absolutely beauty. There is safety. There is righteousness. In that place, there is safety from the enemy. That's the thing too. In that place of reverent submission unto the Father, there is safety from the enemy. So what he did was he renounced his will and aligned himself to the Father for our sake because of his love for us. Where would we be without that cross? I am so thankful that Jesus surrendered. And three times in Matthew 26, he went a little beyond them, fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He went again a second time, praying, saying the same thing. My Father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink from it, your will be done. 40, verse 44, and he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. And that's from the New King James Bible. So every day, every day when we wake up, we got to make this formal declaration of surrendering our will to God and leaving whatever our desires are, our will, way over there. Renounce it, turn away from our will and surrender our will unto God. And one day I'll get there. <laughs> but I can hardly wait to tell you. But it's a process. So no matter where you're at in your reverent submission, you just keep trusting God, keep surrendering, 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 and you'll get there. But the other one that I wanted to talk about was uh, forgiveness. The Bible tells us that Unless we forgive, we will not be forgiven. When Jesus, when the disciples went to Jesus to say, teach us how to pray. In there, there is declarations unto God, like our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. But then there's three petition. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, us our, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Basically, old King James, that's how I was raised. Um, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the enemy. Three petitions. That second one, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And then this was the Sermon on the Mount where he taught them. That's where it shows up in the New King James. The next chapter, Jesus is speaking to them that if we don't, how we forgive others is how God the Father will forgive us. The severity of unforgiveness. And see, we live in such an offensive world right now where people are getting offended left and right and refusing to give out forgiveness. A lot of so-called Christ followers are also in that. We don't understand the severity of not forgiving. If we don't forgive, God the Father cannot forgive us. There is no way to be with him in his presence without forgiving. Also, Derek says, and I totally agree with this too, that petition of forgiving, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, right comes right before, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the enemy or deliver us from Satan and his evil doings. 
If I want to be delivered from the enemy and his evil doings, then I have to forgive. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If I want to be delivered from the enemy, I must be forgiving to others. And sometimes, you know, forgiveness can be quite easy to give out, but other times it can be quite difficult. You still have to forgive. And if you want to be forgiven by God, then we need to forgive. And I just wanted to share that with you today because submission and forgiveness is something that we have to desire each and every day so that we can walk in the presence of God and become the king and priest unto God the Father that God has called us to be. So therefore we are able to rule the world through our prayers. But it's not even possible to do that until we know these two aspects of having our prayers even heard and answered. So I just wanted to share that with you today to encourage you to continue to be submissive unto God the Father and to forgive one another. And if you have had a hard time and you have been hurt badly, start with, Lord, I, I forgive them today. Even if it doesn't feel like it, keep doing it over and over. You keep saying it and keep asking God to help you and he will provide you the help. So, Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you provide and aid us. And that we truly fear you, Lord, and reverent submission unto you because you are God Almighty. And what you say is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you can find my blog at comeupherensee.ca. And... Um, and I just thank you for sharing this time with me today.